This is an appeal by the Reverend Yvonne Clark and the Parochial Church Council, which I'll call the PCC, of her parish, which is All Saints Spring Park in the Diocese of Southwark. The appeal is taken against the decision of the church commissioners to approve a draft scheme which will dissolve the parish and divide its area between the neighbouring parishes of St John Shirley and St George Shirley. The procedure is set out in ecclesiastical legislation which is enacted by the Church of England and approved by Parliament. The relevant legislation is the Mission and Pastoral Measure 2011, which I'll call the 2011 Measure. This provides for a process of consultation with interested parties on proposals such as the rearrangement of parishes and the preparation of a draft scheme which is itself put out to consultation, as I shall explain. The parish of All Saints Spring Park has for many years suffered from financial difficulties and has been unable to support itself or contribute to the wider work of the church. In 2016, an Episcopal visitation concluded that the parish was not financially viable. It was then proposed to dissolve the parish. A statutory consultation on that proposal was started on 8th of January 2020, and the Reverend Yvonne Clark and the PCC made written representations against the proposal as provided for in the 2011 measure. Thereafter, the Bishop of Southwark, having considered the representations for and against the proposal, approved the proposal on 10th June 2020 and asked the church commissioners to prepare a draft scheme under the 2011 measure. On the 21st of January 2020, the church commissioners served a copy of the draft scheme, which had been prepared to give effect to the proposal on interested parties, and those interested parties included the Reverend Devon Clark and the PCC. The church commissioners' letter, in accordance with the 2011 measure, invited them to make written representations on the draft scheme by the deadline of 7th September 2020. The Reverend Yvonne Clark and her son, in a, acting in a personal capacity, submitted timely res representations, but the PCC did not submit representations until the 25th of November 2020, which was outside the statutory limit set out in the 2011 measure. The Church Commissioners decided to make the draft scheme without amendment on the 28th of September 2021 and served a notice of their decision on all those who had made timely representations against the draft scheme, that is, representations by the 7th of September 2020. That notice informed them of their right to appeal to the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council, which I'll call the Board, and the need to give notice of their intention to do so by the 7th of November 2021. The PCC and the Reverend Yvonne Clark sought to challenge the draft scheme before the board on the grounds, among others, that it involved unlawful discrimination against the parish's minority ethnic congregants and residents in breaches of Article 8 and 9 of the European Convention on Human Rights when read with Article 14 of that convention. They also sought to challenge the draft scheme on the ground that the church commissioners had breached the public sector equality duty under section 149 subsection 2 of the Equality Act 2010. Both of those challenges depended upon establishing that the church commissioners were a public authority for the purposes of the Human Rights Act 1998 and the Equality Act. This question raised a question of law of general public importance and the board gave permission to appeal. 
After this, but before the hearing of the appeal, the church commissioners intimated that they wished to challenge the jurisdiction of the board to hear the appeal on the ground that neither the Reverend Yvonne Clark nor the PCC had the necessary standing to appeal to the board. The argument was that the PCC lacked standing because it had not made timely representations against the draft scheme and therefore did not have a right to appeal to the board. In relation to the Reverend Yvonne Clark, the argument was different. While the solicitors had sent a formal notice of intention to apply for leave to appeal to the board in accordance with the statutory timetable, they had failed to identify for whom they were acting. This had the result that the registrar of the board had not been able to ascertain whether the persons for whom the solicitors were acting were in fact entitled to apply for leave to appeal, as she was required to do. While the subsequent grounds of appeal had disclosed who the appellants were, the church commissioners argued that, on a proper interpretation of the 2011 measure, neither the PCC nor the Reverend Clark had standing to appeal. The board, in a unanimous judgment, dismisses the appeals of the PCC and the Reverend Yvonne Clark on the ground that the board does not have jurisdiction to hear the appeal because neither of the appellants have standing. This question is one of statutory <laughs> interpretation, in this case, of the 2011 measure. As explained in more detail in the judgment, the board concludes that the PCC lacks standing under section 12 of the 2011 measure because it did not make timely representations against the draft scheme and only those who have made such representations have a right to apply to appeal to the board. The Reverend Yvonne Clark also lacks standing because the solicitor's application for leave to appeal was defective in its failure to identify for whom the solicitors were acting. On a proper interpretation of the 2011 measure, the Board does not have the power to waive or ignore those irregularities as the measure provides that, in the absence of a valid notice of intention to appeal given in a timely manner, the Church Commissioners must must make the scheme. Now the board was very aware that many in the local community were strongly engaged in the appeal and that the challenge by the church commissioners to the board's jurisdiction was made late in the day. The board heard the challenge to jurisdiction alongside the appeal on the merits at the same hearing. As a courtesy to those who took a close interest in the hearing and in the knowledge that the matter has caused considerable concern in the local community, the board indicates what its decision on the appeal would have been if it had had jurisdiction. The board is satisfied that the church commissioners are not a public authority under the Human Rights Act 1998 or the Equality Act 2010. The making of the scheme involves the reorganization of parishes to make provision for the cure of souls and to further the mission of the church. This is an ecclesiastical function and not one of a public nature. In any event, the draft scheme did not involve unlawful discrimination, nor had there been any failure to take into account the needs of minority ethnic communities whose concerns were addressed in the responses to the consultation. There was also clear evidence that the parish was not financially viable, and there was a compelling case that the parishes of St John Shirley and St George Shirley, with the assistance of a pioneer minister, would be able to serve the community of Shirley, including the UK minority ethnic community. As it is often stated in its jurisprudence, the Board confirms that the 2011 measure has an elaborate process for the obtaining and considering uh, of the views of interested parties, and the draft scheme has the support of responsible bodies within the Church who are charged with promoting its mission. Having regard to those considerations, the Board is slow to intervene in the decisions of the Church Commissioners, except on well-established grounds which do not exist 
in this case. If it had had jurisdiction, the board would not have allowed the appeal on the merits. The board will now adjourn.